So today we're going to explore type 2 diabetes and we're going to explore a possible cure for type 2 diabetes. Okay, so how many of us in the room know someone with type 2 diabetes? Yep, um, I have family who has type 2 diabetes as well. It's definitely a very prevalent disease. Um, as you might already know, it has to do with um, resistance to the hormone insulin. So insulin is important for our cells to be able to absorb and use um, the food that we eat. When we have resistance to insulin, that is when we have diabetes, um, our cells become hungry because it's not able to use the food that we eat. Um, and that results in various symptoms, including having thirst, um, hunger, losing weight and also being very tired easily. So many studies have recently shown us that type 2 diabetes is closely linked to obesity. And as childhood obesity rises, so does children's risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And the burden of obesity in our society, as we know, is uh, very high. Our government is spending up to $11 billion a year right now on health complications that are related to obesity. Please imagine that you are our primary care physicians. And this is your patient. She's 13 years old. She's Natasha. She's 150 centimeters. She weighs 180 pounds. She has high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and she has recently been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So you and her parents in the past have tried various diet programs. You've tried things like Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. You've even recommended more severe measures like drugs or even therapy. However, none of these had very good long-term effects. In fact, they even caused her to later gain more weight than she originally had. So you and Natasha's parents are feeling kind of frustrated. Nothing is working. All these interventions um, you tried with her have only not only got her to not lose weight, but have had her gain weight as well. So Natasha's parents present you with a miracle cure. And they say this cure can drastically reduce her weight permanently, can reverse diabetes, decrease her cholesterol, and decrease her blood pressure. It looks really tempting. So this miracle cure is actually called uh, gastric bypass surgery. Basically, what happens is we would disconnect a large part of Natasha's stomach and connect what's left of her stomach to the, her intestines. Um, since Natasha now has a much smaller stomach, she would be able to eat less and thus lose weight. As a physician, you know that there are other things to consider in this so-called miracle cure. Although gastric bypass surgery seems like a very tempting solution to Natasha's diabetes and obesity, there are many complications. The smaller stomach size for Natasha would mean that she's less able to absorb nutrients. For a growing child, this could be problematic. Also, the long-term results and implications of gastric bypass for children is not very well known. Natasha would additionally have to follow lifelong dietary and lifestyle restrictions. These complications have to be considered very carefully when considering whether or not this is the right path in Natasha's case. So currently in Canada, gastric bypass surgery for type 2 diabetics is more of a last resort as opposed to a first option. So there's many strict requirements that must be met before it should even be considered for children like Natasha. So the main requirement is a very high percentage of body fat that's usually measured um, by your BMI, your body mass index. And Natasha does have this, as we saw. Now you as the physician must also know that all other diet attempts have failed, as we mentioned, that both the parent and child have given consent, and that the child will agree to follow a very strict diet after the gastric bypass operation. You as Natasha's physician know that she meets all of these requirements, but now we'd like to leave a question for you to ponder with. Would you recommend this 13-year-old girl get this surgery, knowing its complications, but also knowing its potential benefits to her? 